At networking events, there will come a time when you will need to end a conversation gracefully, but most people don't know how to do it. I didn't know how to do it when I first started networking either, but over the years, I've developed a number of techniques to help me end conversations gracefully with people I don't wanna to talk to anymore. And I'm gonna share those tips with you in this video. But before we get into the content, I am Kara Ronan and I created this channel for emerging leaders like you to help you build your visibility and influence and unlock your leadership potential. If you want advice like this every week, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. And don't forget to download your leadership evaluation toolkit before you leave. The link is in the description below. Now at some stage in your business life, I'm sure you have come across people who can end conversations with total grace. People who seem to be in control of the conversation and they can end it with complete confidence. These people aren't any different to you. It's just they have learned strategies to help them end a conversation gracefully and with confidence as well. And in this video, I'm going to share with you eight of those strategies, eight strategies I have learned and I use to end conversations gracefully with people. So these eight strategies, I'm going to first cover nonverbal strategies that you can use, and then I'm gonna go over verbal strategies that you can use to help you end conversations gracefully. So let's first look at the nonverbal cues you can use. And the first strategy is to distance yourself. This means means take a small step away from the person that you were talking to. When you physically distance yourself from your conversation partner, it indicates to them that you are getting ready to leave. And subconsciously, they will realize that you are preparing to end the conversation as well. Now, this only does happen if they are tuned into nonverbal cues though. But unfortunately, not everybody is tuned into nonverbal cues. So what ends up happening is you take one step away the other person takes one step closer to you. You take one step away, the other person takes one step closer to you. And this goes on and on and you end up dancing around the room because you are trying to leave the conversation but the other person just doesn't get it. So I recommend you try this strategy, try distancing yourself, but if it doesn't work, then you might need to move on to the other strategies that I'm gonna share with you in this video. Strategy two, point your feet or your foot away. When we point our feet away or toward the door, it indicates to the person we're talking with that we are getting ready to leave the conversation. And again, subconsciously, they should pick up on this clue and they should start to wrap up what they're saying to you. I did talk about pointing your feet away from your conversation partner in one of my other YouTube videos, How to Be Confident Talking to People, which I will put on the screen above and also in the description below if you want to check it out. Strategy three, look over their shoulder. So this is the last nonverbal strategy that I'm going to share with you. Now, when you look over the other person's shoulder as they are talking to you, again, it indicates that you are getting ready to leave the conversation to move on to something else. This technique is a little bit rude. It is a little bit direct. So it may take some confidence and some courage for you to use this technique. But if your conversation partner doesn't pick up on the first two clues that you have left them, which were distancing yourself and pointing your feet away from them or toward the door, then you can try to look over their shoulder to directly and more forcefully indicate you want to end the conversation. The reason this works is because it breaks eye contact with that person. So when we're having a conversation with someone, eye contact is really important to let them know that you're interested in what they're saying. If you break that eye contact, they understand that you are no longer interested in what they're saying. So as I said, this strategy could be a little bit on the rude side. It is quite direct, but it does work. So try it out and see if it works for you. Now we are onto the verbal cues that you can use to end a conversation gracefully. Number four is repeat what they said to take control of the conversation. Repeating what the other person's just said to you is a really good strategy to use to end a conversation gracefully. And this is what it would look like. Oh, so you focus mostly on small business consultancy? That sounds really interesting. I'd love to learn more about that, but right now I have to get going. So when you repeat what that person has just said to you, it helps you to take control of the conversation, to put yourself in the position of conversation leader, which then enables you to end 
the conversation gracefully. Whereas if you were just simply in conversation follow-up position, if you were simply just listening to what that person is telling you, they basically have control of the conversation and they can keep talking and talking and talking if they want to. Whereas if you jump in and you take control of the conversation, then you can steer the conversation to where you want it to go. Number five, use somebody else as an anchor. And this is what using someone else as an anchor would look like. I've really enjoyed talking with you, but I've just seen someone else I need to talk to tonight. So I hope to see you again at another event. Or if you see somebody walking by you as you're talking with the person, then you can say something like this. Louise, it's been fantastic talking to you tonight. Have you met Jennifer? Bringing somebody else into the conversation helps take the pressure off of you. So the attention gets focused on somebody else. And that's that allows you to slip away from the conversation. Number six, ask for their business card. This is a technique I use all of the time. It's probably my favorite technique that I use to end conversations at networking events. And this is what it would look like. It's a shame I have to cut this conversation short. I've really enjoyed talking with you, but can I have your business card so we can connect later online? Or can I have your business card so I can email you next week and organize a time to catch up? And once you have asked them this question, ask them for their business card. It's a great opportunity for you to give them your business card as well. And once you've exchanged business cards, it is much easier for you to move away and end the conversation. Number seven is to introduce them to somebody else. So you can introduce your conversation partner to somebody else at that networking event as a way to end that conversation gracefully. And this is what it would look like. Have you met Douglas over there? Let me introduce you. I think you two have a lot in common. Now, this method is a little sneaky, but again, it does help to take the pressure off of you, put it on someone else and allow you to remove yourself from the conversation. Number eight is the plain interrupt. Now this one does take courage, but sometimes it's the only option you're left with, especially if you are stuck with a rambler, somebody who just keeps talking and keeps talking and will not let you jump in to end the conversation. So this is what a plain interrupt would look like. I'm so sorry to interrupt you and end the conversation early. I've really enjoyed talking with you, but I do have to get going. If you want to soften the plain interrupt, then you can add in something like, I would love to catch up with you again. Here's my card. And this will really help to soften the plain interrupt so that you can continue a relationship with that person and continue a conversation with them at another time. So so there were eight strategies that you can use both verbal and non-verbal strategies to end conversations gracefully at networking events. Now, let me know in the comments below, which strategy will you try out first? Which strategy will you try out at your next networking event? And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel to get videos every week like this in your feed and hit the notification bell as well. Don't forget to check out the other videos on the screen right here. And I will see you again next week with another video.